visions. God, I was taught the logos, the written word of God, is absolute. But I wasn't taught about the rhema word of God, except that God back then spoke to the Old Testament people, prophets, and spoke in the New Testament to John the Baptist, and but it's always about Jesus. And uh, he spoke to Paul, where there's an, uh, an exception. And, and so I, I, wasn't, I, I, didn't, I wasn't expecting anything. You believe the word, you apply it the best you can, but the word is merely logos. Now, I shouldn't say merely because the word of God is the word of God from cover to cover. And I believe that. I believe what's easy to believe, and I believe what's hard to believe, and I believe what I understand, and I believe what I don't understand. If it's in the Word of God, I believe it. I used to kid the professors at the school uh, that one professor that I really admired, a, a Catholic priest, said, now this man can speak four languages, read the Bible, quote, any of the Bible in four languages. I mean, this guy was intelligent, okay? And so he justified away miracles, you know, like feeding the 5,000. Well, back then, actually, they had sleeves inside their shirts, and so they probably pulled out the bread. He said, so you don't really believe, for example, that a whale swallowed Jonah, do you? And I said, I believe the Bible if the Bible said Jonah swallowed the whale, okay? I just believe the Bible. Now, call me simple, but I believe the, the Bible. And it has proven so true. Like people say, how, did, how, how do you know the Bible's true? First of all, how it's changed the world with Christendom. Now, don't go get non-Christians that abused it or people that said they were. The Bible, Jesus Christ, has changed the world for the good. <clears throat> But not only that, I believe it because it speaks to me and comes alive. The logos becoming rhema makes the Bible believable in my life. So I wasn't raised to expect words of knowledge, or I was never taught about we can individually have visions. We thought it was all a, a psychological thing that you, work, you get an idea, then you work it out. <clears throat> and... See, I was taught God was factional, but God was not functional. He's factual, but not functional as you read. Though you might gain a thought, get a thought that's good, even a godly thought, but it's your thought. And I don't believe that. I, now, I believe a lot of them we get are merely our thoughts that proven to be wrong. Therefore, it was my thought. But when the thought comes to us as you're reading the Bible in the Word... God's, logo, God's spirit is moving and ministers to you, then it's God's thought that you're having. And that's what makes the Bible come real. So I want to continue the idea of courage, the series on courage. And in 1 John 5, verses 4 and 5, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcomes the world? But he that believes in Jesus Christ is the Son of God. All right, now that's, the, that's, the, that's our foundation. You have to start believing in Jesus Christ. You have to know him, believe him, and live for him, okay? You have to know him, believe him, and live for him. It's not mere doctrine. It's an experience. And so in doing so, then what's an overcomer? An overcomer is obstacles have to be there, which means all of us, we're going to be called overcomers. That means we're going to be challenged. And whenever we're challenged, there has to be courage. And that's leading into the courage message. So you should expect, I have another book I haven't read. I, I read the intro of it. Uh, obstacles, the way to success. And if you don't have obstacles, you don't mature. You don't grow. You don't, uh, if you saw those, uh, what were the sisters that were, let ten, nine of them hid. Uh, we just saw the, the whole two hour, uh, they were chained to their beds and uh, the what? The Turban? Turpin sisters. 
and they'd been chained for 17 years, uh, and they only got out two times for the, war, the parents to show them off. Anyway, and so they, one of them escapes, and they come in, sure enough, they're chained to the bed, Turpin sisters. Uh, and uh, some, they never see daylight, they've never talked, spoken to anybody, uh, they're not supposed to watch TV except they stole a, a phone from somewhere and started watching, uh, you know. Uh, <clears throat> so, but one of them, the oldest one who's 30, 27, year, you know, 27 years, uh, she looked like she was maybe 14. No creases on her eyes, no, you know, no wrinkles in her brow, otherwise classic. She had never experienced anything, so she hadn't developed like she should have developed, you know, with, with, with trials, with, uh, you know, real life issues. And so <clears throat> in our life, we need to understand obstacles are for our strength. No obstacle sneaks up on you. God knows all about it before it comes. And then while you're there, while you're doing whatever you're going to do to get through the obstacle and continue. God is already there. He knows. <clears throat> so why does he allow these things to happen? Not so he can test your strength, so he can test you so you know your strength. And that takes courage to overcome an obstacle. doesn't matter what the obstacle is. <clears throat> and that makes you an overcomer. So with courage, now catch this, with courage, that's what the teaching's about, with courage, there is risk, and there is threat, and there is confidence if you're going to overcome. So with every threat, every obstacle, it takes courage, and if you're going to follow that courage, there's going to be a risk, and there's going to be a threat, but your confidence makes you overcome. Now, let's bring that into this spiritual. So God is walking us along, walking you along, and he says, okay, time for you to grow in God. Time for you to mature. Now, one of the mistakes Christians make, and, and my, you know, I've been raised with this concept of what church is. So I'm always, that's my vision, natural vision. And See, the Christian mistake is when God's going to do a new thing, we've been preaching that for a good two years now, and for a year we know God's doing something. But here's the mistake. Hello. We as Christians, because our concept, we know what we've experienced, we know where we're coming from, our concept is, oh, God's doing a new thing. That means more of the same. That's not a new thing. You follow that? We're really locked in. I don't care what background that we're coming from. We're locked in. This is the best we know. Otherwise, we'd be doing something else. We're doing the best we know. Therefore, we've got to be right with God. So God's doing a new thing, more of the same. No, and he says new, he means new. For an example, how does God take this church from a storefront to here? At best... We should have just got a bigger storefront. Okay? No, new. I mean, who would have believed it? Okay, I'm doing a new thing. Missions, good. Let's send money to missionaries around the world. That's a good white thing to do in denominations and church. No, I want you to buy a motorcycle. New thing, okay, I got a love for the bikers. A new thing, okay, a bigger bike? No, I want you to buy a hot air balloon. You see, new, new means different, people. So we're saying in this church, God's doing a new thing, it's different. And we better be prepared. So, I want to examine my call in order and, and after I've typed all this out, I realized I skipped some. Matter of fact, the very first vi dream I had back before I was going to Bible Baptist Church, Centropolis Baptist Church, hard notes. I mean hard notes. We didn't even like other Southern Baptists. So 
I had a vision of me on a motorcycle in front of the church with a patch on. Now, I was so naive, I thought, hell's angels. I, just, I didn't know there were other patches. I mean, really, I, I did not know that world, okay? But I had that dream back as a young man before I even went into ministry, and, and that stayed with me. Hence, jump up 100 years, and what am I doing? Taking the gospel on a motorcycle, the church behind the motorcycle, the gospel on a motorcycle to the patch that I thought I saw in the dream. I don't remember the patch. I just remember I had one. New thing. And whenever you get a new thing, you're going to be challenged. Not only in the new thing, oh, you're going to be challenged in the new thing. Because we're, what? We're safe in our box. But take down one of the ends of the box and, whoa, what can blow in? Anything God wants. You, you, you see, take away, if we really trust God, it's like, whoa, I didn't think of that. My ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are bigger than your thoughts. I have a new, that you don't know about, thing to do. Okay, so I want to let on looking at my call, but then end up with our call, because that's where my call brought us, to our call. I want to examine courage, risk, threat, and confidence. Now, obviously, every one of those are a series, okay? I mean, every one of those. You can't look in the Old Testament and not find that with every person we honor. You can't look in the New Testament. Every person we honor, they had courage. They took a risk, and there was a threat, and, but they had the confidence to overcome. I, I was thinking, being Christmas, uh, what about the wise men? I brought this up last Sunday. What about the wise men? Oh, let's go, an angel, wow, a new thing. No, no, no angels yet. Let's obey the, let's have the courage to what? Take the risk and go find the Christ child. They knew this was God. Now, what was the threat? We better go back the other way. Herod wants to kill us. And if we don't, if he catches up with us, he'll kill us anyway. And that took courage. But they overcame. So in our life, I want you to look at everything that you've ever considered that, uh, that you had to overcome. It took courage. And a lot of people, Christians, don't see themselves as courageous. You've got this far, you're still alive, <laughs> you know? It took courage to overcome a hundred things in your life. And with that courage, there's risk and a threat, but your confidence is established in God. Okay, so my walk that brought us here today. I was reading the scripture, and I'm going to go through this quickly because most of you know it. I'm at school taking an educational leave from the police force thinking I'm going to I uh, fill out papers for the FBI, you know. So I'm reading, and the Lord says the scripture from Logo to Rhema. I'm reading Corinthians. Woe unto me if I preach not the gospel of Christ. Whoa. That went in me. It jumped off the page. That's, that's Logo. Jumped off the page. That's Rhema. That's a spoken. That's the ministering, administering word of God. So instantly, I switched school, sold the house, attended seminary. Why? Because my call. Now, I'm going to say these happen in little steps, but obviously that was a leap, okay? I mean, that was a drastic leap. But after that, the Lord started showing little things to prepare me for larger things. So in our Christian walk, Everything you've experienced has been little things, and, and some of you have had leaps in faith because of what? Obstacles, trials, testings, fires, you know. We've all been there. And you realize, wait a minute, that made you who you are today. You're confident in Christ today because you know the Word of God is working in you, and you've overcome a hundred obstacles. And now you're better equipped and qualified to minister to others with the leading of the Lord. And he'll just keep opening the doors. Because why? He doesn't give you that courage so you can sit on it. You don't, you don't get to put it in the bank and cash it in on the other side. 
You use that courage on this side and you bear the fruit and you get to cash that in on the other side, okay, so to speak. Okay, so then I took the first church and during that time I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and we didn't believe in that. We, believed, we didn't believe it was an error, we just knew it was satanic. And then I got it. And uh, so they fired me. And, but right before that happened, I started going to other churches, being indoctrinated with poison. And I see these people, the biggest thing I saw, first of all, they believed God was real in everyday life. They also believe God talked to them. Now I know they're not, they might not be satanic because I do know they got love, but you know, they're not really sound people. They had every kind of Bible, you know, they'd meet in Bible studies, every kind of, I didn't even know they made that, that many Bibles because I was King James, the original King James. One thing I can thank God for is being raised in a house that believed the Bible. I know the scriptures and they're all true. But the problem is, and this isn't all of our life still, is we believe and understand up to the point where we are. But there's more. There's always more, okay? So then I ha had my first vision. I was visiting the Assembly of God Church. They were full of love. I walked in. Now, <laughs> tell me this. It's a small, it, we're in a sanctuary, but it's a small group, 20 maybe. And as I walk in and sat down, the pastor's asking nice things, and he says, and what's your name? And I said, Mark. And, and Mark, why are you here? And, you know, I'm checking them out, you know, big Bible. I said, oh, just watching. And he smiles, he says, just watching, good. Now, how could he identify me? Maybe the frown I had, maybe the huge Bible, but I don't know. They had love, and I didn't, you know, I knew this was good stuff. So anyway, I somehow got over to their church on a Sunday evening uh, and because I was past Sunday, preaching Sunday morning, Sunday evening, Wednesday, like, you know, we did. And Jeremiah 33, 3, uh, ask and I'll show you great and mighty things, I'll know it's not. And a red and white van, you know the story, I've told you it over. I saw it. I wasn't taught about seeing in the Bible. I, I never knew that, but I know what I saw. Long story short, next week, driving down the highway, there it is, turn around, go back and buy it. So now I know that God, his rhema is, word is stirring, not only the logo, it's always based on the logo, the written word of God, but now this, the, the supernatural is now supporting the written word of God. And now the written word of God starts coming alive. And it's like, wow, this stuff works. I, I'm supposed to believe it and, and hope, you know, for what the best. No, no, he gave us the written word because it's his word. And with his spirit combined, it moves us. It transforms us to his image and to what he has for our life. And so I start the second church and, and, uh, uh, and the, first, the seminary I went to, uh, graduated from, which they later took my degree when I received the baptism, uh, was a church planning seminary. Now, wasn't that lucky? Because later I came here and started a church. Didn't have anything to do with luck. Back when I was dumb to hearing God, God still ministered. When I was ignorant, naive, I didn't know. And go to a church planting seminary. So in that seminary, if you're anybody, you go and start churches. And that's what we did while I was in that seminary. We do that on weekends, a lot, of, a lot of fun. But that was preparation for this church. So way back in Belton and in Kansas City, that was all preparation. I didn't get to stay there. I didn't get to see the result. No. He said, I have a call for you. I have a mission for you. I have an obstacle for you. And you're going to gain courage and understanding. It's going to cost you risk and there's going to be threats. But because your confidence, you will overcome. Remember that line, people. You use that in your life over and over and over. So anyway, then I'm pastoring the second church. Drive down Exchange Street. There's my, what? 
that my second vision, or actually my third vision, I knew to come back and start the church. Now, my first fear of God happened when I was praying and debating about sending somebody up here rather than me coming, the fear of God. Now, you know that story, if you've been here at any time at all. The fear of God, 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm, I, kneel, I can still feel the velvet on that green velvet Queen Anne chair. I mean, I, <laughs> that's something you'll never forget. The fear of God came on me. I, I, I knew it was going to kill me right there. I stopped praying, he's going to kill me. If I don't continue to pray, he's going to kill me. If I open my eyes, I know he's behind me, he's going to kill me. I knew, that's the fear of God. The only difference between me and the old king in the Old Testament, my knees weren't knocking. And the reason for that, I'm on my knees, so they couldn't knock. But it's like the fear of God. I was never taught about the fear of God. Even to this day, I've not heard other ministers talk about the fear of God. It's respect, it's honor, and I believe all that too. But he also means fear. And I, that, I think that's one of the problems the Christian church hasn't had, uh, or has, is they have not had the fear of God. But anyway, so I have that. Now I know God's ministers that way. So I quit the church, sold the house, and moved to Geneva. Now, do you see any need for courage yet? Do you see any risk? involved in selling everything, moving up here with no name, no phone number. Do you see any risk yet? And do you see a threat yet? But also, there is confidence that God would lead me. So I'm sitting out on a long pier, and I said, you know, left the family up in Williamson, the relatives, and I come to, <laughs> what I do now? And I'm sitting on a long pier, and I hear this, start walking. Isn't it interesting how God can say so much by saying so little? And you don't ask where, when, why, what, just get up and start walking. Long story short, find a bookstore, Christian bookstore, ask for a full gospel businessman, sends me to Bill Cole, Al Allen, the pastor from North Cohocton, just lucky he was there. No, God knew, God knew, he even knew the little steps. He knew I was going to walk around and ask people silly questions because I didn't know what I was doing. And then I see the bookstore, Christian bookstore. Ah. You know, safe. Maybe I can get some water. <laughs> no, I walk in, they'll say, go up to Bill Coles. You see how the little, God takes you through little steps. And people, it takes just as much courage in little steps as it does big steps. Little steps just merely prepare you for the big steps or the next step. Now, maybe you're going to have a whole slew of little steps. But you'll be able to look back and say, I remember when I was there, but look what God has done in my life. Now I'm here. That takes courage. So we go in, I talk to him, and uh, uh, we, start the, <laughs> we start the Bible study. We start the church in his garage, uh, mechanic's garage. And uh, so then we move up. We find the building available. We move up to the carriage house. Now there I have my third vision of the curved roof, okay, you know this story. So I'm walking around and go downtown because it's not in the front, I'm walking up and down exchange, go around back on the railroad tracks because I couldn't find it, I'm, you know, and I look, there's the roof, Kurt, that's the roof. So I go in and I ask the man, he's selling furniture, putting sales tag, I said, I want to buy your, your building, and he, and he laughs, John Church, he laughs and he says, my building's not for sale, I'm, the furniture's for sale. I, and so anyway, long story short, 45 minutes, we shook hands, he's carrying the loan, and I bought a church. I bought a building. Now, that was another step. You don't think that took courage because there's a risk there. We're only, we're no more than we are now. And so the threat was, what if, do we have the money? The threat was, all of a sudden people started, start, you know, I bought it with no contingencies. Uh, and so we had to go to the city council and uh, get permits. We had to, and all kinds of people lined up to stop us. We don't need a church on Exchange Street. And there's a restaurant all the way down by the light exchange in North Street. Uh, they came up to, to put a stop to it. We're not going to bother them. I mean, the threat was there. And so, so was the confidence. And long story short, of course, we moved in. Now, while there, I had a vision for the bikers 
and the hot air balloon. There's another vision. You know that. I'm not even going to go to go there. And then I have the vision for this building. Long story short, you know all about that. So we move into it, debt free. By the way, I just talked with, spoke with the children's hours, and by the way, they're praying with their each class, not at lunch, just praying for their class, the, the owner. God's bringing the body together in what a new way. I didn't even know that. I just knew they were nice people. Chris walks in on the other day and they're praying. What? You know, it's like, oh my goodness. Lo and behold, God's doing a new thing. Okay? Now, during all of this, there is always a risk, and you hear that in what if. But if you're confident, you know God will take care of those what if. And there's always a threat. You will be challenged in your own head, for one thing, but you'll be challenged by family, you'll be challenged by believers, you'll be challenged by unbelievers. But keep in mind, the promise uh, that I kept in mind, the promise I had when I said, Lord, when you give us our building, if they preach Jesus, they're welcome. Now, I expect a little Norton building with a steeple on it, and you know, and I expected, okay, more white people educated like us, like we already have. I expected more of us. Right? He's doing a new thing. You have 30, 40 people. He's doing a new thing. So now we're going to have 50, 60, 80, 100 people like us. Move into the building. Have you seen any other groups like us? Well, they did. They came and go. Who stays? They're not like us. A new thing. And see, you got to get out of our box. I don't care who we are. Me. I'm waiting for the new thing. I t- Prayed last night with Kathy while we were going to bed. I said, God, sock it to me. <laughs> sock it to us. Do you try? I have enough confidence in Jesus Christ. He gave us this building for a new thing. And that's going to take us out of our safety zone, out of our security net, out of our, but we're going to have the courage, and we do have the courage, and there's risk, and there's a threat, but the confidence of Christ. So now we move into missions into different countries uh, and people, the church is on a slow roll. It's moving, okay, in order to take courage. Remember that line. And when the Lord says, my ways are not your ways, my thoughts are not your thoughts, what he means is they're different. Are you ready for different? You say, well, yeah, well, wait a minute. We got two other churches doing great. They're doing fine. you know, they, but he's not finished. What's different? What more different is he bringing? And so I want to talk about the, there's normal risk, there's cost, security, friendship, uncertainty, the what ifs. That's just normal. Who's going to pay for all this? Uh, what security do we have? Uh, one leader. Oh, by the way, every time we've moved, I've lost elders, I've set up sets of elders. So from up on the carriage house <coughs> where we established the elders, uh, we're not moving down there. Exchange Street is wicked and dangerous. Uh, and then the el- new set of elders downtown, uh, then we move up here. We're not moving up there. Uh, we want to stay down here. And so change. Y- you, get, you get new. See, leadership has to be, including me, leadership has to change. Otherwise, you remain the same. And people, I ain't ma- remaining the same. I'm open to God. I've learned to trust Him. I have confidence in Him. So, you have the threats uh, from the community, but here, most of all, you hear it from other so-called Christians. And Christians, we believe, some are, they just couldn't hear God and agree. I'm fine, separate, go your way, God bless you. But it's, it's, the, it's the others that, that really challenge you. I mean, they're not, they're not open. To, is, is this really God showing you? They, they're not open to discussion. Uh, let me share some things that I've heard uh, just here in Geneva from other Christians when we were moving with God. You can't do that. Remember when the bikers rode in downtown? Some of you know that. Tim Driscoll, he was there first Sunday. I bought my bike, and I rode it into the church. And he said, hey, crazy, I'm never going back at church. 
okay? You can't do that, okay? Uh, what if it doesn't work? What if we move down there and it doesn't work? What if we move up here and it doesn't work? Do you know how many ten, hundreds of thousands now that God has given us for this building alone? People, none of us here are rich. We haven't had any big giver. We haven't had a grant. We haven't had, where does that come from? What about the security? What if it doesn't work? Or, I heard this from leaders, uh, a couple, husband, wife, when I bought the motorcycle. He's just living his second childhood. He'll get over it. <laughs> well, thank you for having such confidence in me as your pastor. Okay? So I bought a bigger bike. Anyway. But here's some other Christians. These are, these are evangelistic tr Christians. These are the ones that passed out tracts on Exchange Street. When they came to, bikers came to church, four families were leaving. And one family that the track passed her out of had two daughters, same ages as my two daughters. They even looked alike, all blonde hair. I said, why are you leaving? And he said, they're not setting by my daughters. I said, they're setting by my daughters. They're not coming in here to rape your daughters. They're, God brought them to hear Jesus, okay? And so that's opposition from within the body. See, outside the body, you expect that, but you don't expect it from within the body. Be aware of that. Or it's either they go or I go. <laughs> We've had that three times in here. Now, it's been other churches, thank God. Well, it's been a couple of families too, but, uh, well, they left. Our church is still here, still doing God's thing, and now doing more God's things with the missions. Uh, and then you hear this. This is when you really know you're not on the same page. When you hear them use words like they and them in our building. People, that is sin. That is sin. There's one body, and that's Jesus Christ. And the hand can't say to the foot, I don't need you. Especially when the head says, shut up, Ann. This is what we're doing. See, you need to, you see, it, well, yeah, but we want more of the same. No. New means different. So, confidence. See, persecution unites. We got united every time we were, quote, persecuted with the other church locations, but divisiveness destroys. Now, in Philippians 1.5, being confident in this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. See, watch God. All of you are the fruit of this ministry. God knew you'd be here. God put, you know, the devil didn't bring you here. The world didn't bring you here. The flesh didn't bring you. The Spirit of God brought you and all those that are going to be here the next hour. This is our body. Listen, this is the fruit, the main fruit, the core fruit of way back when I was sitting in, William, in, in Williamson or in school. Woe unto me if I preach not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because why? You are waiting. You see that? And now, not only us, now this is what I'm talking about, the church is beginning to roll, okay? Reaching out to missions around the world like we've never done before. Does that make sense? We don't even know those people. Where's that money going? Yeah, maybe I'll have, Kevin got all excited about Pakistan, and this woman over there kept calling, and they really connected, and this is the Lord, and he's checking it all out, and, and then she keeps calling, and, and <laughs> I said, Kevin, I hope your passport's up to date. You know? New means new. New means, well, we haven't ever done that before. New means new. Catch this. New means different. So courage. John 1, or Joshua 1, 6 through 8. Be strong and of good courage. That's the essence. You will divide the inheritance. That's us. That's you, people. You're dividing the inheritance because of your faithfulness. You believe God. You're part of this ministry. You have the courage to be so. You're taking the risk, the threat, and you have the confidence. So, hold on to your seat.
and God bless you.